All right, we are live again. Hello, I am Amy Raup of amyraup.com, and I get to come to you live every single week and talk about really, well, what I think are really important, fix my camera, it's really important healthcare topics that you want to know about. And thank you for coming to me as a trusted source. As many of you know, I have been in the field of helping women get pregnant for close to 20 years. I've written four books, they're all behind me. Two of them are bestsellers in the world of fertility and women's health. And I, before becoming an acupuncturist, an herbalist, and an educator, I mentor um, all of my associates in Chinese medicine, acupuncture, business building. I've run a couple mentorship programs. I also teach across the globe and educate other practitioners um, on fertility and modern how to treat the modern fertility client basically and so I you know love the research I love digging deep before becoming an acupuncturist and herbalist I was a research scientist so this morning I spent a lot of time reading current research as I did for when I wrote the egg quality diet on the impacts of antioxidants for egg quality. And there is a shit ton of research supporting the use of antioxidants and seeing positive outcomes impacting not just fertility, um, like pregnancy outcomes, but for women undergoing IVF, we're seeing improved blastocyst rate, uh, we're seeing better egg quality. There's even some cool research that's going on right now that hasn't yet made it to like real life is they're taking um, highly potent antioxidants in liquid form and adding it to the medium where the embryo is growing in the laboratory. So if you're doing IVF, your embryo is growing in a Petri dish, right? It's been fertilized, the egg's been fertilized by the sperm. The goal is to get it to blastocyst where it's super healthy and we either transfer that or we test it to see if it's genetically normal. What some of the research is, is doing right now is actually adding antioxidants to that culture where that Petri dish, this was my previous life, I, I dealt with Petri dishes all day long. I know the exact size and the little medium that they grow, that, that we do everything in, in the Petri dish. They're adding antioxidants to that medium and seeing almost like a 50% increase in blastocyst rate and um, about a 30% increase in, in pregnancy uh, fertility outcomes. Most of the studies only measure until heartbeat, so until about eight weeks, which I wish they did more longitudinal studies and we actually saw like, what is the take home rate? Like what, how many babies are we taking home? But what we are seeing is using antioxidants, obviously in the medium, we're not doing that yet currently, but girls, I think sooner than later. But what we are seeing is that antioxidants taking orally um, as in supplement form, but also don't underestimate the antioxidants in your food, which we're going to get into, but taking antioxidants, eating an antioxidant rich diet, reducing oxidative stress, they're called reactive oxidative species, ROS. Those guys are the bad guys. They age us untimely. They cause a lot of inflammation in our body. They basically cause, as I talk about in the egg quality diet, they cause our bodies to rust and age before it's time and compromise not just egg quality, sperm quality, but the health of every single cell in your body, including the cells in your endometrial lining, so maybe you're less implantable, maybe you reject the embryo because there's too much inflammation. So understanding that it's really not just about supplements, but it's about taking out the exposure to these oxidative species, which are environmental toxins, stuff in your bath and beauty products, right? You guys have heard me say this before. The average woman is exposed to 500 chemicals before she leaves her house in the morning. Those chemicals create reactive oxidative species in your body. They, they counteract any antioxidant that you're taking. If you're taking 600 milligrams of CoQ10, but you're using a crappy toxic shampoo every day, guess what? Negative effect on that CoQ10 negative effect on that CoQ10 because what you are aiming to do with antioxidants, we can't become without any oxidation in our body. That's impossible. It's just like histamines. We can't be histamine free. 
Histamines, we can't be inflammatory for either. We need inflammation, we need histamines, we need some oxidation going on. It's just kind of what happens in our body. The key is, and the same with, with inflammation and histamines and, re, and oxidation, the key is the balance. You want the ratio of antioxidants to oxidants to be maybe 50-50, but ideally like 70-30. How do you, you gotta reduce these though. You can't just add these, you have to reduce these. Because if cellular function is compromised, you're not absorbing your nutrition. If you're not absorbing your nutrition, your vitamins are a waste of money. If cellular function is compromised, if there's too much inflammation in your body, too much oxidation going on in your body, you're not absorbing your nutrients from your diet or from your supplements. So your supplements become a waste of money. Okay, so reducing the exposure to what oxidizes our body is just as important as the supplements we take and as the food we eat. Reduce your chemical exposure. Clean up your Bath & Beauty products. I have Amy approved lists on my website under my recommendations. Go there, download those lists, start making changes. Bath Beauty household, change it over. Go organic with your food, right? We have to reduce the pesticide load. Pesticides are hugely impactful when it comes to oxidation because they are toxic chemicals. You've got to reduce the pesticide load. You've got to go organic with your food. Then you've also got to reduce the omega-6 intake, which comes from packaged, processed, crappy foods that are cooked in crappy, refined vegetable oils like soy oil, corn oil, you name it, uh, canola oil. You gotta get rid of all that. Omega-6s add to oxidation, just boom, boom, boom. So again, you're eating a crappy diet, you're having potato chips every day at lunch that are cooked in crappy oil. It don't matter what kind of antioxidants you're taking. It just doesn't matter, guys, okay? So diet, I did this lecture the other day at the uh, Integrated Fertility Symposium. I talked about gut health, autoimmunity, and uh, modern fertility challenges. And I was talking about basically the egg quality diet and how we need to heal the gut, reduce inflammation, regulate the immune system, fertility should thrive. And of course, the main questions people had was, what supplements do you use? What supplements do you use? What tests do you do? What's, you know, and I was like, guys, like that stuff, because I was, I was educating practitioners, and they want, just like you guys, they want the tangible. They want, I need to just put somebody on 1,200 milligrams of N-acetylcysteine and know that it's going to improve egg quality. Studies have shown N-acetylcysteine is profoundly uh, impactful to egg quality. But again, it comes down to this ratio of antioxidants to oxidants. So if you're doing 1,200 N-acetylcysteine and maybe it, gets, maybe it gets you here, but you're still more oxidized because your diet's crappy, you're still not absorbing all your nutrition because your diet's crappy or your stress levels are too high or you're not sleeping enough. This is not gonna have the same impact it could if you reduce this. And maybe you need less of the expensive vitamins you're taking and you get the same results, right? So to think about that, like, so we really do have to start with the diet. To me, you know, that's why I wrote the egg quality diet. That's why I called it the egg quality diet. Because when we reduce inflammation, when we improve micronutrient absorption, guess what we improve? Antioxidant load in the body. And guess what we also decrease? We, we decrease the oxidative stress. When you do those two things, your ratio goes like this. Antioxidants are much higher than oxidants. That's the goal. So I see it all the time, and you guys might have fallen prey to it too. Women come to me, they're on every single antioxidant that is out there. They read it starts with the egg, and she all she did was just list out all the antioxidants. Uh, I think it's a good book, I think it's valuable. Um, I think there's some mixed messages, and um, and listen, not all of us, you know, uh, people would maybe feel the same way about some of my books. So it's okay, I'm not, I'm not criticizing. But I also, though, think that, and I taught this in the lecture I gave the other day to practitioners, I said she came to me, she was on like 30 supplements. What I did was I reduced her supplements by 90%. I kept her on like four things, five things. I was giving a case review. Changed her diet, changed her level of inflammation because she had all these, as I call them in the Egg Quality Diet book, the kinks in her system. If you guys haven't checked out the book, you should go to amyrop.com slash books. 
The egg quality diet comes with a, a questionnaire that's probably 80 symptoms that are signals to me that your body is in an inflamed state, that your immune system is not regulated, that you are not absorbing your nutrition from your supplements and your diet. And so you are greatly compromised and you are micronutrient deficient. And when you are micronutrient deficient, you do not get the antioxidants in. Your body just is not going to utilize them and you have more oxidation going on. So guess what? Poorer egg quality, poorer outcomes in fertility treatments is, is not going to work for you. You can turn it around. There are research studies now showing that eight weeks, eight weeks following a diet like this can actually really shift it. You can go more heavy on the antioxidants and reduce oxidation. And we know cellular turnover in the body is about every three or so months. So every single cell in your body is technically new in about three months, including the ones in your ovaries, the process of folliculogenesis. We mature those follicles from start to finish um, over a process of 100 days. And the environment in which they mature in impacts their quality greatly. It is not a given that your egg quality diminishes as you get older. That is not a given. There are women, and I work with them all the time, that improve egg quality as they get older. You can too. It only takes a couple weeks. My egg quality diet is 100 days for the reason of folliculogenesis. If you did that 100 days, that's three months, radical transformation. Um, and you'll see that in your, your symptoms of inflammation and then your, your antioxidant, your ability to absorb antioxidants just goes through the roof and you start to benefit. So anyway, I get women, they come to me, they're half eating the diet. Oh, you know, I basically avoid gluten and dairy and soy. And I don't eat a lot of sugar. Um, and I'm taking 30 supplements for 25. And I, you know, I read this book. I read your book. I read that book. I'm taking CoQ10. I'm taking melatonin. I'm taking uh, myo-inositol. I'm taking N-acetylcysteine. I'm taking glutathione. I'm taking uh, NAD+. I'm taking alpha-lipoic acid. L-carnitine, uh, what else? I think those are the big ones, right? I'm taking all of them. Mm -hmm. And vitamin E and vitamin C. And what I typically then say to them is, well, if you're not pooping every day or if you are bloated and gassy after every meal or if you have loose or softer bowel movements or you have all these other inflammatory symptoms like maybe brain fog or fatigue or indigestion, eczema, psoriasis, your body's telling me it's actually not absorbing. All of these vitamins are kind of a waste of money. Um, so what we need to do first is actually improve your absorption rate. So I'm gonna take you off a lot of these supplements. I'm gonna keep you on the basics. My basics are in my books, um, very straightforward. Uh, liver pills, a good quality fish oil or cod liver oil, vitamin D, a good quality prenatal with uh, methylfolate. I do really love full circle prenatal. It's linked out on my website. They do have some antioxidants in there, which is great. I love thorn prenatal as well. Um, probiotics, did I say that? Um, and then, and maybe also a spirulina. Um, I love E3 Live or I love Nutrex spirulina, which is a, an antioxidant powerhouse in and of itself, but it's food-based. So I go back to food first as medicine. Start to see the body heal, then we start to layer in the antioxidants. We know things like endometriosis is impacted by oxidative stress. We know PCOS is impacted by oxidative stress. PCOS is, is definitely a disease of the mitochondria. There is mitochondrial dysfunction. So you might have a ton of eggs, but they could be quality compromised in their quality. And we see that time and again. Um, so you really want to think about like, it's not just about layering all these supplements because there's research and there's data. And there is. There, there's good research. There's research that shows um, oral supplementation of antioxidants in women showed no difference, by the way, no difference in how many eggs they retrieved, no difference in fertilization rate, but significant difference in clinical pregnancy rate. Um, and also, sorry, um, and significant difference in getting to a, a heart rate at, at eight weeks. So it was upwards of almost doubling with antioxidants. So adding in ones like, I must have, I took all these notes and, and half of them are missing here. I wonder what happened. Um, very fascinating. This is sad. I have my notes open and I must have somehow accidentally deleted something in here. But um, 
so the oral supplementation that they tested was N-acetylcysteine, uh, melatonin, alpha lipoic acid, and um, now I have to remember all of it from my head. Uh, I think L-carnitine. Oh, and inositol, inositol. So those all showed that women undergoing fertility treatments, when we added those in, there's separate studies on each um, individual antioxidant. There's also studies done on some antioxidant formulas. Um, the FH Pro for women, which I used to not recommend at all because it had folic acid. They have now switched it and added methylfolate. That was one that was studied. Um, it's very similar to Mitocore, which is another one that I recommend. Um, those antioxidant formulas, there's another one called mitochondrial formula by BioClinics, which I also like. Those formulations are basically showing that we're getting upwards of about a 30% increase in clinical pregnancy rate and getting to um, an eight week mark. And that's when they typically stop the studies. So again, there was no change in seeing how many eggs we retrieved, nor the fertilization rate. But that's because they didn't have the partners on the antioxidant. If we put sperm on antioxidants, it's insane what happened. So there's been, over the last 40 years, significant decline in male fertility. Um, and even young, healthy men, there's a 40% de decrease across the board in all the sperm parameters. And that is due to our lifestyle. That is due to inflammatory exposures, oxidative stress, um, again, you put men on antioxidants. Again, I highly recommend diet first. I have a whole healthy daddy diet that's outlined um, in the egg quality diet, also in Yes, You Can Get Pregnant. Um, I've done videos on this ad nauseum about sperm health, but if you put, I bet you if you put men on antioxidants and then women on their antioxidants, you would increase fertilization rate. I'm quite positive of that, and I, I think maybe that's been proven so far in the, in the literature. But um, men seem to, the, the most research that's been done on men is acetyl L-carnitine. Seems to have a great impact. Again, I also typically go to Mitocore for my men, uh, uh, along with liver pills and spirulina. Seems to do the job. I've seen guys with really poor sperm counts, and we do, ideally too, we change their diet, we do some acupuncture, we add in um, Mitocore, the spirulina, or E3 Live, liver pills, and a good quality fish oil, a couple grams of good quality fish oil, you will see sperm parameters change and quickly. When you see that, you typically see better embryo quality. So, but the studies are showing women, um, there was another study I talked about that this one guy, Dr. Gardner did where he actually added antioxidants directly to the culture medium of the embryo. And like I said, they added acetylcarnitine, NAC and alpha lipoic acid. It, it doubled um, blastocyst rate in women. Um, 57% made it to blast versus 23%, which is a cra crazy, and it was women 35 to 40. Um, and then the oral supplementation um, was where we saw, we saw it was not so much as doubled, but it was about a 30 to 40% increase in clinical pregnancy rate, which is also pretty fascinating. Then there's some cool studies on, this is the one I currently take, NAD+. I take it by Elysium Health only because it's so researched. But there's also studies on NAD+, plus, um, reversing the declining quality of maternally aged oocytes, so eggs. So collectively, our data revealed that supplementation with NAD+, plus, NMN supplementation, is a feasible approach to protect eggs from advanced maternal age-related deterioration, contributing to the improvement of a reproductive outcome of aged women and assisted reproductive technology. Another study showed NAD replation, which means giving more NAD, rescues female fertility during reproductive aging. Rescues, how amazing is that? So um, what they saw, treatment with NAD plus metabolic precursor rejuvenates egg quality in aged animals, leading to restoration and fertility. And this can be recapitulated by transgenic overexpression. So anyway, they can see it again in other models. These benefits um, of NAD extend to the developing embryo where supplementation reverses the adverse effect of maternal age on developmental milestones. These findings suggest that late life restoration and of NAD plus levels represents an opportunity to rescue female reproductive function in mammals. 
Take that in, rescuing. Now, I've read other studies where in mouse models, applying NAD plus takes them out of menopause and gets them to not just ovulate again, but to get pregnant and carry the term a healthy child. That's in the mouse models, but still, they're mammals. It's fascinating. So the research is there, but I want you all to take in mind that you're not going to absorb all of your vitamins if you don't have a good healthy groundwork in your nutrition, in your diet. And the diet like the A-Quality diet where you're getting six to eight servings of vegetables a day, you're getting really good quality fat. Fat, the, the master antioxidants are vitamin A, C, D, and E. Guess which ones, how many are fat soluble of those? Three of them, three are fat soluble. They come from good quality fat sources. They also come, certain vegetables have all of them, um, liver contains a lot of them, which is why I love liver and the literature really supports liver being an amazing fertility antioxidant supplement, liver as in the actual organ meat. Um, I talk about it in detail in my book, so you can go there and, and read more about it. But the egg quality diet really pounds you. It's an anti-inflammatory diet that is antioxidant rich. So you start there and then you layer in the antioxidants. So to me, I don't know that we need to all go out and take 600 milligrams of CoQ10, 200 milligrams of alkali lipoic acid, NAD+, 600, 900, 1200 of, of N-acetylcysteine, glutathione, melatonin, um, myo-inositol. I do think, I, I do specific ones depending on the case. Some girls, if I see blood sugar issues or polycystic ovaries, I definitely go with myo-inositol. Um, other women, if it's age-related stuff, I go with NAD+. Uh, CoQ10, I think, across the board has been shown to be beneficial. I do think the Neo-Q10 is probably one of the best ones out there. Um, I also like Life Extension, the, the PQQ one. Um, they're listed on my website. I do think melatonin, I'll add that in if there's sleep issues. I also do the Dutch test on many of my clients and I can see their status of glutathione, which N-acetylcysteine is the precursor to glutathione. I can see their melatonin status. I can see their, their antioxidant load and then I make decisions based on that. The Dutch test tells me so much. And I think you should work with a practitioner that's actually looking at these things. I mean, if you don't have the resources to do that, then I want you to think about like, okay, I got to make sure I maximize my nutrition and reduce my oxidation load. So reduce my exposures to oxidants, thereby changing the ratio of antioxidants to oxidants in my body. That is the key. You can't get rid of these guys. Just like you can't get rid of inflammation. You can't get rid of histamines. It's about a balance. We need an inflammatory response. We need histamines. Those things keep us alive. We need some oxidation. It just kind of gets the body to keep doing its thing. It's like, you know, just like my spiritual teacher Abraham always says, you need some contrast because it gets you clearer on what you want. And so we need that. We can't get rid of it. But so we want to think about diet first, reducing that exposure, that change, changing our diet reduces the exposure, changing our lifestyle reduces the exposure, increasing your vegetable intake, eating good quality fats, eating good quality proteins, and that's about it. Limiting your exposure to all the other toxins in the food. Right there, you're already changing your ratio significantly. Then you add in supplements. Some girls I'll recommend like alternating. Okay, do your MitoCore one day and then your prenatal the next day. Or do CoQ10 and then alpha lipoic acid. CoQ10, alpha lipoic acid. Because I am just not a fan of over supplementation. I think it can be exhaustive and very expensive. And I'm not sure that, you know, I haven't, yeah, the proof is in the pudding. I have not been sold yet on any one antioxidant. I think myo-inositol might be my favorite antioxidant uh, just because I feel like it captures so, it, like the net is large on what it can capture. And then I think CoQ10 is the most studied. I love N-acetylcysteine for immune system stuff. Um, again, when I do the Dutch, if I see glutathione low, I'll go to N-acetylcysteine. I love NAD plus for this, this aging thing. I think it's really fascinating what the NAD plus does. The research is fascinating. Um, and then again, sperm health, the same thing. We can't, we can't talk about egg quality and ultimately embryo quality if we don't address sperm health. And so again, same thing. We got to reduce their oxidative exposures, improve their antioxidant rich diet, Add in anti-inflammatory antioxidant. Again, uh, acetyl L-carnitine has been the most 
studied. There's also um, zinc, selenium, and uh, yeah, and L-carnitine. Sorry, those all have shown significant improvements in concentration, motility, and morphology, and then also decreases in DNA fragmentation if you have done that test. So again, I'll go to MitoCore. I like the E3 Live. So I do MitoCore, E3 Live, liver, good quality fish oil. Um, there is the FH Pro for men, which also is a very good product that kind of does one-stop shopping. So if your guy, you know, my husband takes the MitoCore every day and his E3 Live and he enjoys that, it's fine for him. But if your guy only wants to take from one bottle, I would go with the FH Pro for men. Um, yeah, and so I also am like kind of, I don't have FH Pro, I don't think necessarily on my website. Um, I was just watching, like I said, a bunch of research this morning and looking at their products and maybe um, shifting my viewpoint a little bit because I was, I am very much an anal retentive person about the quality of the vitamins and where they are getting them from. And then also the testing, are they third party tested? Are we making sure there's no heavy metals, no fillers, no anything else that's disruptive to the the microbiome, to the gut health, to inflammation in the body, because there's no point, you know how many vitamin E and vitamin D supplements out there are, are made in soy oil? Check all your vitamins. Make sure there's no soy oil, because soy oil is one of the most omega-6 rich fatty acids that will be pro-inflammatory, pro-oxidizing in your body, but yet you're taking vitamin E or vitamin D antioxidants you're not getting anywhere with those supplements. You're, got, you're getting nowhere. You're probably getting negative effects. So make sure. And so back in the day, there were certain companies that I never stood behind because of the quality of the ingredients they were using and the carrier oils they were using in making these products. Um, and some have changed for the better. So I'm allowed to change my tune because everybody's allowed to evolve and grow. Um, but just make sure, like you want to think about where can I decrease that oxidation load? Where can I increase it nutritionally? And then we, the supplements are like the drizzles, the cherry on top. They are not the game changer, especially if you have a poor quality diet or a poor quality lifestyle. If you're majorly stressed and you're not sleeping, it does not matter what antioxidants you're taking because the stress and the lack of sleep are going to oxidize the shit out of you. So you have to think about this as a holistic approach. It is not taking 600 milligrams of CoQ10 and 2,000 milligrams of myelinositol to get better egg quality. That is misinformation, and whoever has put it out there is wrong in saying that. You have to start with reducing your exposure, increasing your exposure nutritionally, then adding in the supplements. That's how it works. You cannot absorb supplements if you have a shitty digestive tract. If you have leaky gut or inflammation, those supplements are a waste of money. So... It's a holistic approach. It's the approach that I address in all of my books, most importantly, most recently in my book, The Egg Quality Diet. So if you wanna take a deeper dive into this conversation, check out The Egg Quality Diet. It's literally 100 days of menus um, for what you should eat at, to improve your egg quality. And then layered in, there's shopping lists, there's recipes, of course. There's research in the beginning about the approach and why there's a ton of testimonials, but also layered in is an incredibly valuable resources page that comes free with the book where I have basically, I mean, I've also given you all PDFs in there. Like you can download all the recipes. You can download and print out your shopping list for the week. Um, there's also tons of videos and content that I have curated, like my best of the best, basically that you get access to all in one stop shopping. There's recommended reading. Um, there's so much more. This is so much more than a $15 book. It's legitimately like hundreds of dollars of content in one book. So if you want to take a deeper dive on that and look into your egg quality and how you can improve your egg quality, please do so. But you will notice too that there's a part of the diet where I remove all supplementation for 11 days. And I do that on purpose. People freak out. You can do whatever you want. There's videos on the website of the book that go along with the book that kind of talk you through each phase and why I do what I do and that you are human and you do the best you can do. But I remove supplements a lot of times when I first start working with people because I don't know what's going on with what. And I gotta first fix the inflammation. I gotta fix the system first. I gotta get the system back in homeostasis, back to absorbing micronutrients, back to managing, like not being in fight or flight, but starting to thrive. And then we layer in the supplements and they will do so much better for you. 
So there you have it. There's my talk on antioxidants. I, again, I do think they exist. They're awesome. I personally take NAD plus every day by Elysium Health. I take myo inositol. I alternate it with N-acetylcysteine. Um, I do that. I also have myo inositol in my prenatal by full circle, which I take. I take liver pills every day. I take um, fermented cod liver oil every day. I take vitamin D. Um, what else do I take? I think that's it. I can't even remember now. Um, vitamin D, oh, probiotics. I take the seed probiotic right now, I'm playing around. Probiotics, vitamin D, fish oil, uh, N-acetyls, NAD, and then I alternate N-acetylcysteine with myo-inositol. Did I say liver? I definitely take liver every day. Um, and there you have it, yes. And I took my genetic age last week and I happen to be 11 and a half years younger genetically than I am chronologically. And that is all in part to my diet and my lifestyle and probably some of my um, supplementation. So anyway, there you have it. Check out my latest book, The Egg Quality Diet. Go to amyrop.com slash books. You can get all the information there. Again, remember, it's so much more than a book. It comes with an entire website of information for you that is literally hundreds of dollars in value. And uh, yeah, dive in. I'm excited to hear feedback and keep your eyes and ears out too because I want to start collecting data on people before they start the program and after to, to see the impacts of genetic age uh, shifting on the program because we're starting to survey just the women that I've been working with one-on-one -on -one and we're seeing on average that um, there's at least a five-year genetic age shift down. So you're getting five years genetically younger from following a program like this for eight to 12 weeks. Ideally, you're following it for at least three months. Ideally, it becomes a lifestyle, which it has for me, which is why I'm genetically 11 and a half years younger than my current age. Is that crazy or what? Okay, I'll see you guys later. Have a wonderful day. Um, amyrop.com slash books. And yeah, ciao for now. Let me see. You know, actually, I didn't go through questions. Let me see. Love you, girl. You guys are great. Sorry. Um, well, this will be a little watch later. How do we measure our antioxidant to ox levels? Um, it is not in blood work. Sorry, I, I realized I was saying goodbye, but I didn't answer questions, so let me do that. Um, it is not in blood work. Typically, you can do what's called a micronutrient panel or the NutraVal. They give you ideas or feedback on like your CoQ10 status and basically your omega-3 status, so you can get an idea. CRP and homocysteine are the best measures in general blood work for inflammatory markers, so how inflamed you are. Um, hi, Margaret Thorne. Is quality, if a quality issue in eggs or sperm is chromosomal, can that be improved? 100%, because the chromosomal issue, though, happens in division. So abnormal cellular division comes from poor quality eggs and sperm, and that's how you get chromosomal issues. If you have an inherited genetic issue like that, that is heritable, which only 5% of diseases are heritable, so think like muscular dystrophy is a, is a heritable disease. Those girls have to do IVF with PGS testing to make sure they create probes to make sure you don't carry. That's a, that's a carrier for a heritable disease. Everything else, only 5% of diseases are heritable. Everything else is happening when egg and sperm meet and they divide. And what, what the research is showing, so it's a very good question, what the research is showing is that these antioxidants are improving how the cells divide. So they're basically making healthier embryos because what these antioxidants are doing are improving cellular division. When cellular division is abnormal, that's when we have chromosomal abnormalities. Um, you guys are so cute. What brand of NMM? So I already mentioned it. It's on my website. Go to amyrop.com under recommended supplements. It's the Elysium. Um, what about FSH of 130 and losing your period at 37? So again, that's premature ovarian failure or insufficiency. There is a lot of data that suggests it's an inflammatory response and or has autoimmune links. I would absolutely try my egg quality diet and see if it shifts. I've dealt with a handful of women, I'd say, that were premature ovarian failure. We've reversed it and they have gone on to have healthy children. I have one that is still in the process, but she will do it. Um, I take mine without the capsicle, capsule, which is typically GMO. You can do that too. Um, okay, so brands, you go to my website, amyrop.com, under my recommended supplements. Um, yeah, so smoking is like the number one no, no good for anybody. So um, look at the research. I would find some research. Smoke, Google smoking 
and sperm issues and, and show him some of the articles. Um, I'm reading your book and a little confused on supplements. Many are out of stock. There's, I think full circle might've been out of stock. It's back in stock. Liver, Dr. Ron's is out of stock, but ancestral and vital proteins are both in stock. Um, yeah. So thank you. Beth, answering that. Um, okay. Okay. And let me go through Instagram, see if there's any questions here. And then I do actually have to go cause I have a coaching call. Um, and I need to eat my lunch. Let's see. And if you guys want to know more about like how I do all the things I do, watch me on Instagram because I constantly am posting in stories of like what my lunch looks like, my exercise, my things. Oh, the one thing I forgot to mention is I do also take melatonin at night for sleep and I freaking love it. Um, so that is another antioxidant that I take. Uh, and again, all brands recommended supplements are on my website. Which is your which of your books is best for meal plans? The egg quality diet. Um, how the heck can I get a consultation with you? <laughs> email my team. Um, go email info at amyraup.com. Do you think DHEA is necessary to improve fertility? Again, I use the Dutch to see what DHEA levels are like and whether or not we need to use it. Um, I do not think every single person should be on DHEA. I think that's reckless recommendations, just like recommending everybody to be on Vitex. I think that's reckless. DIM is another reckless recommendation that if you're not testing and you know exactly where the estrogens are and which ones are moving down which pathway and which ones you need to help support or clear, you should not be making these recommendations. So I use the Dutch test to get clear with all of my clients on DHEA status, on Estrogen, progesterone, um, uh, estrogen status, how things are moving down which pathway, methylation status, um, organic acids. So can, it, can we use egg quality diet for endo? Absolutely. That's literally, honestly, why it was created. And then I started seeing it work for kind of everybody. So yes, even if you're not trying to conceive. Um, so the vitamin A question came up on Facebook as well. Read, I think Beth posted, I did a whole live on vitamin A um, and safety. So you can Google that and you will see it. Um, what's your opinion on alcohol affecting sperm quality? I mean, it's clear. Excessive alcohol, cigarette smoking, overweight, poor sedentary lifestyle all severely impact um, sperm quality. They say, you know, Five to eight drinks a week for a man is perfectly fine. Excess of that is going to impact things. Uh, if you have a clean diet and I think a higher alcohol intake and you're on good supplements, I think you can weigh it out a little bit so you can pick and choose your battles. Good quality alcohol when they drink it. Make sure it's organic, ideally gluten-free. Um, okay. NAD, okay. Again, did you only recommend MitoCore for men or for women too? For both. It really just depends on the case and what we're trying to achieve. Um, someone asked, NMN, it's on my website. Um, okay, for PCOS, just read the egg quality diet. Um, so in the UK, just search NAD plus on your Amazon and see what comes up. Uh, I do recommend NAD for men. Um, NAD Life Extension ships to the UK. Um, Will soy oil be listed on the package? It will. In other ingredients, it'll be there. I like the wholesome story of myelinositol. That's what I take, actually. Egg quality diet is fire. Okay, if you love the egg quality diet, please, please, please go leave a review for the egg quality diet on Amazon. I really would appreciate that. I come to you guys live every week and I spew a shit ton of free information. Do me a solid. Leave me a review for the egg quality diet. It helps me so much. Thank you. Um, your book's so much less overwhelming than it starts with the egg. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, uh, what's the genetic age test? What is it test for? Cool. It just takes biomarkers from a standard physical and you plug it into a thing. It's called the Horvath analysis. This guy has been researching it and there's all this Harvard research going on about it. And you plug it in and it gives you what your genetic age is. Um, can I? Okay. So I'm not going to. Uh, okay. Um, any good study? I would just Google alcohol and sperm 
There's tons of stuff out there. Does a vegan diet affect sperm quality? I think it can, yes, just like it can affect female um, egg quality. Um, I think you can have a latte for your birthday. Just try to um, make it organic and clean, low sugar. Um, okay, so that's it, guys. Now I'm really going to go. I'm going to eat my lunch before my 1 o'clock call. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Love you guys. I'll see you next week. Thank you.